Um, and I think it's at this point uh, in time, I think it's, um, I think it's, it's a safe career, so to speak. I, I think there's a lot of companies who are interested um, you know, in hiring quants, not just quants, but you're sort of data analysts and data scientists, just people with analytical skills. And I think going forward, you know, we fast forward five, 10, 15 years from now, more and more countries and more and more industries are going to start hiring people with the type of analytical skills, um, you know, that you could, that you'd learn as a quant. So I think it puts you in a very good position to future proof yourself almost. Um, you, you know, to make sure that in the next 10, 15 years that your skills are actually still going to be um, relevant. Um, so I think it's nice to be in a space where I can exercise, you know, creativity and at the same time, you know, still use my maths and stats skills on a daily basis. So uh, probably there is a student who's going to watch this. Uh, probably they're doing maths or from any of the analytical sciences and they want to be a quant as well. They want to get into the quant space. And obviously there's going to be a series of interviews. There's going to be, I don't know uh, how you guys do it because I know with some uh, professions, you find that there is an interview and then there are some case studies uh, whereby people are given case studies and then they have to now think and there are some assessments, psychometric tests and all of those type of things. How does it go in, in, in the quant space? Like generally, of course. I think it's, it is going to vary from institution to institution. Um, I think, you know, generally speaking, you know, there'll be an interview. Um, there, there's generally, a, you know, a case study. There's generally some sort of psychometric assessment um, and then possibly a, a second interview as well. Um, there'll probably be, no, there, there probably will be a second interview. Um, and in my experience, they have kind of split. So sometimes you have a technical interview where, you know, the conversation is more about your, your technical skills, um, your problem solving skills and things like that. And then sometimes you have, uh, you know, the other side is, you know, interviews where they're more just trying to get to know you. Uh, who are you as a person? How do you think? Um, what's your personality like? Are you going to fit in with the team? That type of thing. Um, I think that's, you know, sort of a, a general uh, idea of what the process is going to be. When you come to graduate programs, it might be a little bit more involved. Um, there might just be a few extra assessments. Um, but honestly, it is going to vary. And I think that is one of the things that you kind of need to get used to is that you need to be ready for anything and everything. Um, for the most part, you know, the structure is sort of the same, like how, how, how I explained, but you can't guarantee that. Uh, so sometimes you just got to learn to roll with the punches. And I think, I think the more interviews you do, the more comfortable you're going to get with them. To be honest, the first one's probably going to be bad. But as long as you learn from it and, you know, you, you, you figure out sort of you know, where your flaws are, what you're doing wrong, and you learn from it and build on it, eventually you're going to get very comfortable with doing them. You're going to eventually get used to the type of assessments that will get thrown at you. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's, you know, that's one of the other things. So you mustn't feel like you're dumb or something if you don't make it through the interviews or the assessments, whatever the case is. It would just mean you're probably just not used to them. And if you do them three, four, five times, you eventually, you, know, you start seeing some sort of patterns. Sure. Yeah. Um, so here's a student. They are probably not sure, um, just like you, when you're finishing up your studies, probably they're doing their honors. They're not sure what they're going to do. Uh, maybe in mathematical sciences or any of the analytical sciences. And convince them to be a quant right look you obviously you know studied maths or stats or whatever the case is for a reason okay because i mean i'm guessing here but 
most likely you enjoy numbers, you enjoy analytical thinking, you enjoy thinking outside of the box, you enjoy solving problems, uh, uh, you know, amongst other things. And do you want to find yourself in a career where you're doing the same thing every day, you're not really using any of your skills from university, and then you get bored and you hate it and you know when you don't enjoy things you don't put in effort do you want that or do you actually want a career where you get to use some of your skills where you're surrounded by you know other like-minded people who are highly intelligent people um and where you know on a day-to-day basis you don't really know what might come up things are different they're constantly changing um and i think if, if you are a person who enjoys keep you know, to, to keep learning new things. Um, I think it's a career that's going to be interesting to you because you constantly have to stay afloat, uh, stay afloat of new technologies and new developments. And there's just always some regulation that changes and then you have to go rebuild your models or whatever the case is. There's nothing that's the same. You know, it's not boring work, if that makes sense. Um, and I think it's at this point uh, in time, I think it's... Um, I think it's it's a safe career, so to speak. I, I think there's a lot of companies who are interested, um, you know, in hiring quants, not just quants, but you're sort of data analysts and data scientists, just people with analytical skills. And I think going forward, you know, we fast forward five, 10, 15 years from now, more and more countries and more and more industries are gonna start hiring people with the type of analytical skills um, you know, that you could, that you'd learn as a quant. So I think it puts you in a very good position to future-proof yourself almost, um, you, you know, to make sure that in the next 10, 15 years that your skills are actually still going to be um, relevant. And, you know, you might not necessarily even be working as a ba- in a bank. You know, I know people who've you know, worked as a quant and then they've join marketing companies or, you know, fast moving consumer good companies or whatever the case might be. And they're now applying those skills to different areas. And I think more and more companies are starting to realize that, you know, sort of your maths and stats is actually very important. Um, You know, those type of skills you, you you can't get away from. So I think it really will put you in a space where you're competitive. And I think there's especially, you know, as a quant, I, I feel like there's more roles than, than people. <laughs> um, you know, we're not, it's not, it's not a market that's oversaturated. Um, it's, and it's a lot of fun. I think it's a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, I think there's very few places outside of academia that you get to work with people with sort of PhDs and masters in stats and physics and whatever the case might be. So, I think it's I think it's fun. I think it's fun. It's quite interesting <laughs> when um when you have a uh this let's say for a quant and you see them going into other value chains or in other markets that previously those were not the natural markets for them. Like uh, I saw when I was scrolling uh, online yesterday that you have quants who are in marketing. And I was like, marketing. And now you have some who are in HR because you do have some data analytics that side and everything. And I, I was like, that is very quite interesting, you know? Mm. Look, I mean, it's, it's uh, I, I guess we're calling, using the word quant, you know, but I mean, it, I mean, you're not really doing, you know, the traditional work as a quant, but you're taking a lot of the skills that you learn. I mean, I mean, the same could be applied for anyone, you know, who's an actuary or a data scientist or data analyst or whatever the case is. And you're just really applying those same skill sets to another industry. Because I think a lot of companies are starting to realize that with the amount of competition that there is in the market, you need, you know, any advantages that you can get. You know, why dumb suck you know numbers when you can come to a more accurate answer and when you're just working with data with data when the millions and millions of records you can't open excel and have a look and draw a few graphs and say okay here's the trend cool it doesn't work like that um 
it, it's it's you know when it comes to working with you know data of that size you need people who you know with the skills to actually work with data um you know whether that's you know something as you know simple as just cleaning the data and you know making a few graphs or whether you're actually going the machine learning route or whatever the case might be but it's i think if you want to be competitive in the market you need information right you know information is is really what drives the decisions of your business so if you can't accurately even figure out you know what your business is doing or where your your market should be how can you make proper business decisions because i think before you know businesses were small maybe they didn't have um access to the data that we have access to now so you know you sort of worked off of people's experience within the industry for many many years and i think that that's you know very valuable to have but it is changing um you you the, the trends that you you can work out are just incredible i think you know especially from you know maybe like a marketing point of view or you know how do you really work out you know your target market for example there's a lot of ways that you could initially do that but now if we can actually get data for about who is buying what product and when they're buying it and what stores they're buying it from this that's a lot more valuable information now if you just have a huge part of this information and there's millions of records you can't really do anything with it so you need people with the skills to actually turn that data into something that you can actually use in a business sense right and then then you have a look at the then you know you present that to people with you know knowledge and experience within the industry and you put those two things together and you realize how much more profitable you actually going to make your business true true what's the rewarding about your job i think for me one of the the biggest things is that it it feels very much like real work Okay, all job is real work. Uh, but what I mean is I I can see where my efforts go. I can see how it makes an impact um you know on the business. At the end of the day I can see in the financial statements like cool. I helped do that. You know. And I think just you know being in an environment where it, it's constantly changing and it's just it keeps my mind sharp. Uh, you know more than anything else it's never a boring day at work i think i think that's a good thing I, i really do because i hate to be bored i hate doing the same thing over and over again i don't like repetition um so i think it's nice to be in a space where i, I can exercise you know creativity and at the same time you know still use my maths and stats skills on a daily basis I don't think it can get more rewarding than that um because uh, you know like uh, one student was saying this to me he was he was like yo we're doing this proofs the theorems I can't wait to see them work in the real place and I was like well it's kind of different but surely you know some of this stuff you know that the thought process and the thinking process you will actually get to to do that so I guess it it is even more rewarding having lent the skills and now using them in real life especially mathematics in real life mm. no exactly look i mean like i said to you in some ways um you know the models we work with are more complicated than at school but in a lot of ways they were so a lot simpler um you know there's not going to be proofs there's you know you're not really going to run into um you know r- problems of real analysis or anything like that but I think if you maybe, you know, go the pure applied maths route, I think you'll see a much closer link. Um, but, you know, other than that, it's really your thinking process and your thought process. Um, you know, quantitative work and market risk, uh, they deal with a lot more complicated math. Um, so it really also just depends where you sort of what type of quant um, you you actually become and where you slot in. At the end of the day, you're all doing analytic work. 
Um, so it's not exactly like doing your real analysis or your measure theory or whatever the case is. Um, but there are some elements of it that creep through. But like I said to you, the most important is your, your logical way of thinking, your analytical skills. Um, that is important. Kim Lucas, um, this was a great session and I, I have no doubt that um, the people who are interested in being a quant and who are going to watch this, they're going to leave this with a lot of sort of insights and, you know, they have an idea of what it actually entails because the, well, like I said, uh, a lot of people don't know about these things, the information and everything like that. Mm. And, and for that, thank you for gracing our channel. And no. hopefully we have uh, future conversations about, you know, uh, other things, you know. No, happy, happy to be here. Um, thank you for having me. And yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you'll come up with uh, a lot of different topics that we can have a chat on, but that's a lot of fun. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Um...